Welcome everyone to our seminar today. It's a great pleasure to have Masood Kalkali, who um, Masood will tell us about the Newton divided differences, higher curve quantum tori, and scalar curvature. So please, Masood. Yeah. Thank you, Shang. Uh, uh, I'd like to start by thanking Shang and Guliang for, uh, for their kind invitation. Uh, it's, I'm extremely pleased uh, to give this talk here now. I'm sorry for postponing it for some time, so it was some... Um, so actually, I'm going to start from the end of the title, more or less, uh, and then we'll go to Newton divided difference, but because... Um, anyhow, so uh, let's start from uh, classical situations, see kind of uh, wrap up what we know in, in, in classically about curvature. So in uh, classical differential geometry, uh, I mean, curvature really started in earnest by studies of Gauss, uh, the Gaussian curvature of surfaces, especially his theorem of Regium. And then uh, a giant step uh, changed by, uh, was, was taken by Riemann, where he introduced this uh, curvature tensor, much more complicated quantity, R-I-J-K-L, the four tensor. And then uh, Ricci found uh, Ricci uh, curvature, R-I-J, uh, which is quite interesting also, as we'll see. And then there was scalar curvature, which is a contraction of free field. And there's also this very interesting uh, wild curvature tensor, uh, CIJKL. So we have a whole slew of uh, invariants in classical differential geometry. Uh, of course, as you know, they, they, they appear in many places, uh, physics and geometry. I mean, scalar curvature appears prominently in Einstein-Hilbert action. Uh, integral of total scalar curvature is uh, the action for uh, general relativity. Uh, variational equation for this action is Einstein's field equations, as, 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 as we know. Uh, well, Tij is the right-hand side, which is the energy matter distribution, since lambda is this kind of mysterious cosmological constant. People are still debating about its nature, whether it's related to dark energy, dark matter, or things like that, uh, or not, uh, but it was already predicted, was put by Einstein and was taken out of the equation by Einstein himself. And then, of course, there is Yang-Mills action, but it again involves curvature for curvature for uh, vector bundles, uh, principal bundles, G bundles. Of course, uh, there is also chen Bay theory. I mean, you have and Chen Simon theory, there is a curvature um, gain appear there. I mean, it interacts with, uh, with topology in this case, a, a theory of characteristic classes, uh, Chen character, Chen classes, all kinds of characteristic classes through Chen Wei theory. Uh, so, uh, curvature ideas really permeate through large sections of mathematics and physics. Uh, they appear, for example, as obstructions to flatness as force fields uh, in Yang-Mills theory in electrodynamics and in, in standard models. So it's, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a big deal, uh, uh, the curvature. I mean, to show you that it's a big deal, I mean, one of the most uh, kind of iconic images from last year was this uh, black hole image uh, was taken by Event Horizon Telescope last year, it was all over the place. Uh, so you're looking at a solution of Einstein field equations, uh, which is a, one of, is a black hole. And uh, so it, it was taken almost after uh, a little more than 100 years after, uh, after the theory was developed. Uh, another incarnation of this, uh, of course, uh, is a um, uh, LIGO experiment, which was four years ago, they detected uh, gravitational waves. Uh, amazingly, it was again predicted by Einstein himself, uh, more or less 1916, 1917. Uh, so you know these stories, but I just want to indicate that uh, they really figure uh, prominently in, in, in physics uh, and uh, in, in, in mathematics. Uh, so, uh, 
but maybe to understand, uh, kind of, it, it's a good idea to compare our situation with the situation in 19th century a little bit. I think uh, uh, taking, I, I want to take a little bit uh, historical point of view at the start to, to tell you uh, how things started. Uh, you see, uh, we, we are kind of in classical geometry. We are really <clears throat> following, uh, sorry, Riemann's blueprint. Uh, so uh, Riemann wrote two papers on differential geometry. The second paper is much less known. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in Latin. It was submitted as his entry into a, a prize competition by Paris Academy. It's full of computations, uh, computation after computations. Uh, but the first paper is well, uh, everybody knows and talks about, and indeed it's much more important uh, paper, much heavier uh, content. Uh, so all ideas of abstract set, general notions of space, manifold, Riemannian, and even more general types of metrics, sectional curvature, curvature tensor, Christopher symbol, idea of intrinsic geometries versus extrinsic geometry, ideas of dimension, even infinite dimensions, uh, continuum dimensions, local equivalence problem of metrics. All of these things were kind of born really in these two papers of Riemann. So uh, that's, uh, that's kind of perspective we have, to, we have to bear in mind as we move on. But Riemann was uh, himself actually uh, built the theory on the shoulders of Gauss. Uh, of course, he he really extended vastly uh, Gauss's material, but, 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 the, but the thing was, a giant step was taken by Gauss, and I kind of listed these things, uh, the issues that Gauss struggled with and his major, major breakthroughs. And amazingly, amazingly, all of these steps are still with us and actually is used in, in current work also in one way or, 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 or the other in current work in uh, curvature in, in, in the non-commutative setting. So, for example, the Gauss map, which is uh, his first invention in that paper, in that, 19, in, in that 1828 paper, is, is the grandfather of Chen Bei theory. It's a classifying map, really. Uh, or his Theorema Egregium that uh, amazingly proves that uh, curvature that was at first defined extrinsically it turns out to be completely expressible in terms of this quadratic differential, which, re, uh, which now we call Riemannian metric for surfaces, but it was started there. And he also proves a local uh, gauss von theorem. He doesn't prove the gauss von theorem, but there's a local version which uh, the, uh, the defect, angular defect of a geodesic triangle is uh, proportional, actually equal to the total curvature in, of that uh, triangle, geodesic triangle. The sums of interior angles minus pi is uh, total uh, curvature, Gaussian curvature. He also proved another, before this paper, another amazing theorem, which is a local uniformization theorem that he shows that uh, basically um, two dimensional Riemannian metrics are always uh, locally conformally flat. You can, you can always in two dimensions find local coordinates at least such that the metric is going to be of the form e to the h times dx squared plus dy squared. And that's also a kind of clue for us uh, in, in at least in two dimensional studies why this, in the commutative case, covers all cases. Now, um, of course, now we are in 21st century, so let's talk about uh, space uh, in its uh, new incarnations. So uh, we have the idea of uh, Alain Kahn. Uh, so a geometric space, a non commutative space, is given by a spectral triple, AHD. Uh, I need say nothing about this uh, to this audience. Uh, so uh, I just say spectral triples, AHD, you know, like M for a manifold. So, um, so now uh, we have to assume some sort of uh, uh, technical condition in order to move on. Uh, so the assumption is that uh, these uh, localized uh, traces of heat operators, so for any element of the algebra or smooth part of the algebra, these traces of uh, heat operator times A 
there is some uh, asymptotic uh, expansion uh, near zero. So it's short, uh, short time asymptotic expansion. The right hand side is not a convergent series in general. Uh, it's actually divergent. It, this is an asymptotic series, as you know. So this is a technical uh, thing we have to assume. Um, uh, M is dimension of this uh, quantum space or non-quantum space. Uh, okay, so now the way, uh, as you know, non computer geometry progressed is, is that uh, we kind of naturally came to, uh, to use uh, spectral geometry as, as the main tool. In many ways, this is kind of uh, unavoidable, but uh, that's, that's the clue from the classical geometry that we have. So here is, is an alternative approach to, uh, to invariance of geometry that directly relates to uh, spectrum of, 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 of the operators, geometric operators, and kind of information that you can glean from a spectrum that's also available in, 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 in the, in the non-commutative case. Uh, some of it, uh, not, not all of it, some of it are, are available. So the, the main question now for us is, can one hear the curvature? Or you can say, what kind of curvature one can hear, really? Uh, so that's, that's, that's the question. But the question was asked, really, can you, for example, hear the volume of, of, of a manifold or, or, or a domain in three-dimensional space? This was the question that was asked by Lawrence Zomerfeld and, and others uh, early 20th century. And uh, as you know, Herman Weil gave, uh, gave an, a spectacular answer to this question. Uh, I mean, so the number of eigenvalues uh, for the Laplace operator, in his case, it was flat Laplace you know, for domains in, in, in R3 and Rn, but the proof then was extended to compact Riemannian manifolds in general, that this eigenvalue counting function, uh, N of lambda, uh, gives uh, the information about uh, the volume and the dimension of the manifold through this uh, Wiles asymptotic law famous was asymptotic law, which is uh, eigenvalues, uh, the total number of eigenvalues less than lambda grows like lambda to the power m over two. So this is the first result of a spectral geometry, but as, as we will see, many other results were found. And uh, so in particular, we are heavily relying on, on the Gilkey's uh, kind of overall uh, uh, kind of expansion of the heat kernel as, as I'll discuss. So to, to package the spectrum, there are different ways you can package the spectrum into generating functions. Uh, one would be to, um, to, to use uh, zeta functions. Uh, you can use uh, alternatively theta functions. So theta functions is basically what we discussed as heat trace and zeta functions are uh, zeta functions. Uh, the clue comes from Riemann zeta function where lambda i's are just one, two, three, but these are just uh, spectrum of, of, of a Laplace operator on a compact uh, uh, manifold, for example, without boundary or could be with boundary. It's always a convergent that we are part of a bigger than half of dimension. And there is also analytic continuation. It's uh, regular at zero and the structure of uh, poles and residue at these poles uh, are related to geometric invariants. Uh, uh, so um, this is uh, this is a kind of uh, this is a tool uh, that one can one can use to to formulate or to to get information uh, from from the spectrum. Uh, so now. Just quickly, uh, how this curvature for um, for uh, for these spectral triples uh, with suitable conditions can be defined. These two results, uh, which uh, follows from uh, the, the the results of the spectral geometry, can be taken as as our definition. So you see, their theorems becomes our definitions in some sense. Uh, so that's, that's somehow the way the game is played. 
So if you lose, if you use this uh, localized zeta function, zeta fs, which is trace of f uh, Laplace to the power minus s, uh, the scalar curvature density uh, is uh, related to, uh, in dimensions bigger than equal to three, is related to residue of this uh, zeta function uh, at uh, subleading pole, m over two minus one. This is the one. And uh, at dimension two, uh, the formula is different, uh, so the value of zeta at uh, s equal to zero gives you uh, the scalar curvature density. I mean, localized zeta gives you a scalar curvature density. You have to subtract uh, uh, the basically trace of this projection into the kernel of the Laplacian. So p is the projection into kernel of the Laplacian. So zeta function formulation is very good. For example. You can, uh, was as Ray Singer and others did, uh, regularize zeta, uh, zeta determinants is like that, is uh, negative zeta prime at zero, because we know that <laughs> for these uh, manifolds, uh, the zeta is regular at zero, so you can take its derivative. It's much harder to compute the derivative of zeta than computing uh, its values, by the way. By the way, are there any questions? Or I I'm not sure if is this, is, can you hear me or? We can yeah. hear you. Please continue. Yeah, okay. we can hear you. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you. So um, now we can just go on. So to to move on, we have to take a little bit more general point of view. So uh, we look at the general Laplace type operators. Uh, and heat kernel asymptotics. Uh, so these coefficients uh, of heat kernel, uh, asym I mean, uh, asymptotics, the kernel of the heat operator for uh, Laplace type operators uh, <clears throat> has, has a long history. Uh, it, it, it started with Minakshi syndrome, uh, Plemel, and then Ray and Singer, and then others. And eventually I think Gilkey um, basically computed these things up to order, I think, a, a, a eight or maybe a 10. I'm not sure a 10 he computed, but maybe a six. I'm not 100% sure. So they get these coefficients, uh, which are uh, functions uh, on the manifold, or you can say endomorphism valued functions on, on, on the manifold, depending on the bundle that this operator P is acting on, have been computed. Uh, so uh, they, they are like this. The, the, the zero term is a trace of the identity of the bundle. This is the famous while term that already gives you the while result. Uh, this is great. The second one is a trace of this, uh, uh, again, uh, this, there's, a, there's an endomorphism, canonical endomorphism of the bundle emerges from your plus type operator if you write it in certain form. This is E and then R is scalar curvature with values in that bundle. So you take, uh, you take, uh, it's trace again, uh, fiber-wise trace, you get A2. That's really the first two that we need. But then there is formula also for A4, which uh, in the non computed case, we don't know how to use it at all. This is one of the, one of the mysteries because uh, everything here is, is, is kind of missing. So, uh, excuse me, Masoud. Oh, yes, yes. Could you I think there is a confusion about the enumeration of the A's. Could, could you switch back one slide oh, once again? Sure, yes. Yeah, oh, no. so. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. So, yes. You, so you, are, you are A1. So in, in, in Geeky's counting, your A1 will be A2. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and your A2 on this slide will be A4. Should so be A4, on. that's right. Yeah, yeah, there, there, is, there, is, a, uh, there, is, there is a problem with, this, with my notation, right. Thank you, uh, Matthias, yes, indeed. Yes, uh, the thing is only even uh, terms in one, one way of counting actually appears and that's what uh, we use. Anyhow, so this uh, fourth formula uh, or third formula is not very useful for us, but the first two are extremely useful. So, okay, so that's for a classical case. Now, uh, what is a curved quantum torus? 
so Nankam Titorus is, is, is an amazing object, as you know, in every decade in the development of non geometry, it comes back and shows another aspect of it. It's kind of, uh, it's like a harmonic oscillator for quantum physicists. Uh, I mean, the life of a quantum physicist, they say, is, is, is basically spent to understanding harmonic oscillator and apply it in different situations. So, uh, I mean, quantum torus also uh, is similar. So it started, uh, of course, as, as a topological object in 1980s, and then it moved on. And every decade, a new feature is added to this. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk about that, but uh, I, 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 lately, uh, just, just to lighten up a little bit, lately I, I was watching news, there was, there was an amazing question by a five-year-old. Uh, as she was uh, watching all the news about, uh, about fighting uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus and all these things, everybody was talking about bending the curve. Uh, so she said, yeah, everybody's talking about bending the curve, but what is a curve? <laughs> I, I found this question really amazing. And, and in many ways, I, I, I find myself similar in a similar situation. Uh, very often, I mean, what is what is a quantum torus? What is a what is a, what is a curved quantum torus? Uh, we have some clues, but still a lot remains uh, to be done. Anyhow, so uh, the 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 the, the non-commutative torus, of course, you know, uh, as 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 a topological space uh, is a C-star algebra, universal C-star algebra generated by unitaries U and B. There is a canonical trace, and there are two derivations acting on the smooth uh, parts, which uh, I don't need to spend any time on that. But then uh, the added structure uh, came in the form of uh, complex structure uh, and the corresponding Dolpo uh, flat Laplacian. So uh, the uh, complex structure uh, was, uh, it's, you just take a clue from, from the classical situation. You take a point in the upper half plane, and you uh, define new uh, Dolbo operators, uh, delta one plus tau delta two and delta star, which is delta one plus tau bar delta two. So if tau is equal to i, you do get really a del and del bar operator of complex analysis, which, or, or, or usual torus, uh, elliptic curve, uh, but you can, you, can, you can take any point in the upper half plane. And the corresponding uh, flat Dolbo Laplacian uh, just tell a star there, it's, it's there. Okay, so using that result of Gauss, uh, then uh, you, you know what you can do. So you can uh, perturb uh, the, uh, this conformal class by, by a conformal factor, and then uh, you, you, by this local uniformization. In the classical case, you know that you have, you have, you have covered good ground. Uh, but in, in the non case, we don't know, but that's what actually Kahn and uh, Tretkov uh, chose. So what they did, uh, indeed, they, uh, well, in, in their case, tau was i, uh, to tell you the uh, real situation. And they varied the metric uh, conformally uh, in the sense that they, you, took, you, you take an element, a self-adjoint element in, 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 in smooth self-adjoint element in the non torus, and then you change your trace uh, by doing uh, by, by usual uh, perturbation of, of, of the trace. So this trace now is, is a state, but it's not trace anymore. It's, it's not normalized anymore, but, but it still is, is, is a non unnormalized state. Okay, so it's a KMS state uh, with modular operator, modular group uh, sigma t, which is given by that, and modular automorphism, which uh, unfortunately is denoted by uh, delta. So uh, we are going to use a triangle later on for the Laplacian and, or at least flat Laplacian. And this uh, bold delta is gonna be uh, for modular automorphism uh, of, of this perturbation. And uh, so this is important because it comes into the formulas as, as, as we'll see in all, all formulas, these things come in. And then, the, the, okay, here we go, is, is a non-commutative uh, and uh, curved uh, torus, uh, which is, the, I would say, is the first example, which goes back to contract of uh, a paper uh, from late 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh, um, so, well, you, you do what you do. I mean, uh, you, you perturb uh, the uh, 
the metric, uh, you do GNS construction, you get H5, which is the uh, GNS silver space. H10 is essentially H. Uh, and then you have these Dolgo operators and you, you take, this uh, uh, is a, a, a two graded uh, spectral triple. And uh, it's even, I mean, and then you have this, this square, which is these two operators. Now these two operators are quite difficult to analyze per se, but the observation was that uh, actually they, they are conformally, uh, they, they are anti-unitarily equivalent to something which is more amenable to computations as, as we'll see. So this is the content of the first uh, paper uh, that uh, actually dealt with a kind of curvature related invariance in this uh, spectral non quantum geom geometry sense. So what they showed uh, eventually is that for all k theta and for uh, k is e to the h, by the way, and for tau equal to root minus one, i, uh, the value zeta of zero of the zeta function of this operator of Dolbola plus here, which is anti-unitary equivalent to k del star del k. Well, this del star is, is this uh, is unperturbed uh, Dolbo. Mm. Um, is given by zeta zero plus one equal to this expression. So, so you, ha you have this expression that looks very complicated. And this expression, uh, how to understand it? Okay, so there is this operator, uh, modular operator delta. There is a function, explicit function they found in terms of truncations of these log functions. A very interesting uh, transcendental function they found. You apply that uh, to this modular operator, you apply this to this element, and here is uh, another element of the non-complete torus, uh, and here is a similar in a kind of symmetric way, and then you apply your uh, state uh, phi uh, to these things, and zeta zero plus one is equal to that. So uh, just a little bit of a story here. This uh, was like this for a state for almost eight, nine years. Uh, uh, so uh, they didn't know uh, how to simplify this. And it was, uh, so they didn't publish the paper. So uh, on, uh, till the time came when Alan learned uh, how to use computers. <laughs> then he became a master of uh, mathematical and com computer, and then he could, he could simplify this. And the result was, uh, was uh, this gauss bonnet theorem that as it was expected in the classical case from this spectral geometry result, zeta of zero plus one should be independent of any metric because the gauss bonnet theorem says that for any metric, the total scalar curvature is, going, is given by uh, the only characteristic uh, of, 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 of the torus, but only characteristic is zero. So basically zeta zero plus one is uh, equal to Euler characteristic, which is expected. Then we extended this uh, for all tau. Uh, in our case, uh, there was two more terms had to be added. So this not, it, was not, uh, it was not two terms, it was four terms. But again, four terms canceled and you, you, you get zero. Right? The, the computations were, uh, heavier in that case, but it could be done. It was done some time ago. Okay, so uh, that's, the, uh, that's the beginning. Uh, but then uh, from beginning, uh, we were all interested in finding uh, the curvature itself. Uh, I think Henry uh, later on actually found the proof of this uh, uh, gauss bonnet theorem itself, which is non-computational. And this is in uh, Khan Moskowitz uh, paper. Well, this result I'm writing here up here. But, the, but, the, but, the, but the, the, thing, the thing itself is to compute the curvature. And for that, there is, of course, no uh, shortcut uh, per se. I mean, you had to, to get uh, down and dirty and then do the computation. So, um, so the result uh, that was obtained uh, really at the same time, uh, maybe same days even, uh, as we were communicating with each other also, so is that uh, for, um, yeah, for this uh, curved uh, non-commutative torus, uh, 
for general conformal factor, general um, uh, conformal structure, it's given by this explicit formula. Again, there are uh, functions R1, one variable function, I will write it down, and two variable function R2, and then there is this, another two variable, just, uh, just function of two variables, a smooth, actually, analytic function of two variables, W, that uh, gives you the, um, the value of the scalar curvature as an element of the non commutative torus. So this is an element of the non commutative torus. And uh, it's obtained uh, through some sort of functional calculus. So you apply your function to this operator, apply it to this element of the non-computer torus. Well, delta zero is really flat Laplacian. It, it, it's flat Laplacian. So here, for example, in the last term, the commutator uh, appears. Here, anti-commutator appears. Uh, these terms are kind of uh, uh, features of this uh, non commutative situation. And uh, so this operation I will describe soon, but uh, this is an element of the non commutative torus. It's a smooth element of the non commutative torus. So these functions uh, explicitly computed, for example, R1 is given by this sine hyperbolic function. That R2 is, is, is an analytic function. Uh, of, of two variables and uh, W is also one of the functions of two variables. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, so that, that, that's, that's the result. I mean, still we are, we are struggling to understand what, what really mean, what really this means. And uh, I mean, is there any really, really, really uh, shortcut uh, proof? I mean, or conceptual proof or, uh, some proof that would, would make it much easier to understand the formula. So this is still going on. So these are uh, graphs of these functions. Uh, so, so I want to, uh, so the first thing I want to, uh, first point I want to emphasize is you should compare this formula that, that appeared here, this, this, this rather complicated, although I mean, the original expression has 700, 800 terms. So it's am still amazing that it can be a kind of kind of packed into this like three lines, but uh, you should compare with Gauss's formula. This formula, I think, is I believe is in Gauss's paper in 1828. So if uh, you have some kind of conformally flat metric, the curvature, the Gauss curvature, is so this delta is not modular operator. I'm sorry for the notation again. This is flat Laplacian, and e to the minus h. You just take the Laplace, Laplacian of your uh, function of two variables multiplied by e to the minus h, and that, that's, that's the curvature. It's, it's just so, so simple. I mean, and of course, there is no way to extrapolate from here to those strange formulas, right? So with, with very, very explicit functions of one or two, two variables, stuff like that. I should also say, uh, related to uh, kind of these issues, the, this is analytic versus algebraic approach. I mean, so Jonathan Rosenberg uh, proved the uh, uh, maybe. Sorry, question. Yeah. So, so no questions. Yeah. So please continue. Yeah. I, I heard the noise, but uh, I, I don't think that I can I can hear. So uh, so. So Rosenberg, uh, Jonathan uh, gave a Levi-Civita uh, type theorem, and then you create a, co a connection from, from the metric. So once you have connection, uh, then, then you, can, you, can, you, you can use this sort of chain weight theory, non commutative chain weight theory, and uh, he was able to define actually full curvature tensor in those situations. But we don't know what's the relation between the two formulas. He was also able to prove this uh, for conformally flat metrics that gauss bonnet theorem holds. But again, we have to, we want to see that for general metrics, and these are all interesting open questions. So we have to we have still we have to see. So there are a lot of lot of open problems in this area. So we we are we are no better than that five year old girl who asked that question. What's the care? 
Okay, so now uh, what is next? Uh, so the next, as, as I said in my, my, my abstract, uh, so the real question is how to extend these computations to higher dimensions, because there's nothing in these formulas and also nothing in the approach that would tell us how to extend to higher dimensions. And also to non-conformally flat metrics, how you go there, because in, because of this uniformization theorem, uh, it's only it's in, the, in the classical case, you're not uh, very different. I mean, if you take a conformally flat metric by uniformization theorem, you're really dealing with, uh, with, and if you take all general conformal structures tau, you're really dealing with all metrics. But we don't have a uniformization theorem yet in, in the non commutative case. So, uh, so what about other metrics? And I can, we can write down many metrics actually, and as you'll see, and we don't know what's going on in, in those cases. It's, it's, it's completely open. Uh, so that's another interesting feature. So uh, for example, what is Ritchie curvature? I, I will have an answer for that. Uh, or Einstein field equations. I don't know how this Ritchie is related to Einstein in this case. Or, or even, so the question of all questions really is what is full Riemann curvature tense? Or if there is, a, if there exists at all, I mean, I don't, are we entitled to know that? I'm not sure. Or what is wild tensor for, uh, which detects uh, conformal flatness of metrics? Uh, these sort of things are, it seems to me, are very, very difficult issues that way, way ahead of us. I mean, I don't feel that we are any close to uh, touching these things yet. But uh, just briefly mention how we tackled this uh, Ricci curvature. So this is uh, work I did with Oscar and uh, Remus uh, Floriso. Um, so the, 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 the help here comes through Weizenbock's formula. So Weizenbock's formula, you can formulate as Hodge minus Bachner equal to Ricci. So as, as I would say, so that's the kind of nice way of writing it. So then again, using uh, Gilkey's asymptotic expansion uh, uh, formulas, you can, you can have a proposal for Ricci curvature, uh, provided you are willing to work for, with uh, Laplacian uh, on one forms. So far we work with Laplacians on, 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 uh, on a scalars, uh, more or less. But if you work with Laplacian on one forms, you, you, you can have a, 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 a definition of, uh, Ricci in the non complete case uh, for, for, for tori, for example, non complete tori. So the, the, the spectral triple in this case you take is, uh, is this Durham spectral triple. It's not Dirac spectral triple, it's, it's Durham. And the Laplacian on one form, so this is this, uh, this uh, Hodge minus Buckner, this is the Weizenbock uh, formula. And we have an explicit formula for E, which, which is uh, computed in terms of uh, Ricci curvature. This is the Ricci curvature as an endomorphism uh, valued, uh, basically, um, as, as a, a section of, of, of an endomorphism of a bundle, of the tangent bundle, actually. So I don't want to get into that, but there is a way, and has been computed, actually, in, 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 in several papers, uh, in actually, maybe a couple of papers. So for three, in the three-dimensional case, in the two-dimensional case, and uh, so there's, uh, but there's still there's a lot going through there, to be done there. Uh, now I want to, I want to get into um, the really, the, now the, the title, um, getting closer to the title. So this is uh, the situation where we looked at non-conformal perturbations and higher dimensions. Uh, in, in some cases, um, something can be done, and 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 it was done in this paper with with Oscar. Uh, so um, uh, so this relied on a really on a new understanding of. Um, this uh, rearrangement lemma but that was done by Matthias Lesch. Uh, so it was, it played a crucial role for us. I mean, uh, without, without uh, this uh, new understanding, we were not able to, to formulate any of these things. So, I mean, so, so Matthias played a big role. Of course, I mean, he was before, the, we also had this nice paper with Henry on, uh, Heisenberg modules over, over, over quantum tori and uh, spectral geometry of those things. Uh, so it worked out very nice to do differential calculus there also. So, um, so here's a notation for a functional calculus. When you have a kind of 
sister algebra A and some elements uh, in the sister algebra. These things need not commute. And uh, you have a function with some good growth at infinity so that Fourier transform, infinite inverse Fourier transform works. Then you define this element, which you basically sandwich B1, B2, Bn between uh, these, these operators or these elements, and you integrate against the inverse uh, Fourier transform of the function. And this is, uh, so, so this is a extension of a kind of uh, functional calculus for polynomials to, to smooth functions. Okay, so uh, the rearrangement lemma originally was, um, was uh, as it was born in the paper of Kahn and Tretkov, because to, to calculate trace, you have to compute some integrals at the end. Uh, this heat trace, you have to compute some integrals. So these integrals uh, are integrals of non-commutative elements, which are of this form. The U, of course, is, is a parameter in R, but this K is e to the H, and there is this element B in general, some, some element B. So and you want to, you want to evaluate such, such, uh, such, such expressions. I mean, because B and K do not commute, I mean, computing such things is, is, is quite difficult. So it's related to the question of normal ordering in, in, in quantum mechanics, basically. You want to write it in some form. You want to, you want to work with elements in, in, in one form, uh, bring it to the standard form, and then integrate. So the Lesch version, the Matthias version, is that uh, the extension of this, um, you sandwich elements B1, Bn, it's going to be given by actually this sort of contraction forms, which is functional calculus that's introduced here, uh, of a very explicit function. I mean, the function is given by integrating products of these classical functions. So these are functions. So this is integration over, over uh, just classical variables, integration of function of two variables. And then you apply to these elements B1, B2, Bn. So this result is, uh, is, is kind of what, what we are going to use. Another piece of data was uh, sort of uh, introducing a class of H, uh, class of differential operators. Uh, so so the, the thing is, there is really no standard notion of differential operators in the non-commutative case. You see, if, if I give you, you see, in algebraic geometry also this is understood. If you, you give me a commutative algebra or, or even a scheme or whatever, then there is a notion of uh, differential operators on that commutative algebra. It can work out completely algebraically. I mean, we have also you have this theory of D modules and everything just works out perfectly nice in that case. Just because you have this nice Heisenberg relation, PQ minus QP equal to one. But nothing like that exists in the non-commutative case. So in the non-commutative case, the issue of pseudo differential calculus becomes becomes uh, quite important. Also, how you define your differential operators becomes uh, quite important. Now, what what is it that gives you uh, indication that you are working towards something or you are making some general statements? Well, what is really needed is that you want to have a class of so called differential operators that you can invert it so that you can invert it because we have to invert this we, in order to use a spectral uh, geometry recipes we have to invert this operator we have to invert the laplacian or generalized laplacian and inverting needs an infinite process you have to start and zero term first term and next term and this one. So next term is enough for us the second order term is enough but but you have to start this process and you then you have to get back into something which is in, in your original class. I mean, so that's, that's, that's the thing. And this class that we found uh, for, um, called the H differential operators, it's in this paper and it worked for us. So that's, uh, that's, that's all that there is to it. I mean, there may be other classes of differential operators, fine, uh, more general, but that's, that's what we found. So, uh, Another thing, again, uh, directly uh, motivated by this uh, Lesch paper, uh, Matthias paper, is that uh, this uh, Newton uh, divided uh, differences uh, are quite important in order to express 
uh, all, all terms in the expansion in terms of explicit functions. So Newton was really uh, fond of uh, uh, these, uh, these calculations he did. So here's an example of one of the several discrete calculi that was uh, developed by people one of them by Newton. So the first one is eval evaluation and the higher ones are done by recursion. And so you just take discrete uh, derivatives and then discrete derivatives of discrete derivatives and so on. But this is the kind of notations. But the uh, beautiful formula is that uh, this is given by an explicit formula, which is, uh, I believe is Lagrange uh, interpolation formula if not exactly the same, maybe related to Lagrange interpolation form, because right hand side seems to me like Lagrange interpolation form. Okay, so this is another piece of uh, ingredient uh, that amazingly uh, comes into the game. And uh, so with this understood, the class of uh, Laplace type differential operators you can do something with them. I mean, in this generality, again, we are, I mean, it's, it's not too general. I mean, we are over the non-complete torques. I mean, let, let, let it be known. We are not working over, over general algebra. And this, this delta one, delta n's are, uh, are, are uh, derivations. Although maybe a little bit of this can be generalized, but I'm not sure. But the thing is this B2 term of the expansion, uh, the, 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 the second term can be explicitly computed in terms of, explicit functions. Now these explicit functions are, are, are hard to compute, but there is recipe for them in terms of Newton divided differences. So they can be, if, if you want, they can be computed. I mean, um, for, for explicitly uh, given element H. Um, another thing is that now notice we have gone from dimension two to dimension N all of a sudden. So we didn't know how to do this in general from going from dimension two to dimension n in general. So this is, uh, this is uh, one of the things, uh, uh, but, but then uh, the other terms uh, are, are kind of heavy really. I mean, you, you, I mean, I mean, the rest of the formulas you don't want to look at even, but uh, the, the thing is uh, it can be, it can be, they can be computed explicitly for, for, for even in this general n dimensional case. Okay, so, but this is, this is the general asymptotic expansion uh, for, the, for the heat kernel, if you want, of uh, this sort of general class of Laplace type operators, non computed Laplace type operators, if you want. But we want to apply this to, uh, to some sort of operators that comes from somewhere, you know, I mean, in order to relate to geometry, we, ha we have to start from some metric. So the metrics uh, that turn out to work uh, for us, again, it's not the most general kind of metrics you can take. I mean, you can take, uh, I guess that's what actually Jonathan also did. You can take an arbitrary n by n matrix of elements of the non complete torus and uh, you use this uh, flatness structure for, for the tangent bundle to define a kind of metric on this Hilbert module of, of, of the tangent bundle and higher forms. But you don't know really how that would work. I mean, this is extremely hard to, to work with. So basically the metrics that we took, the, all elements in the entries, they really commute with each other because they are obtained by applying some functions, gij, smooth functions, gij on some, some, some self-adjoint element h. So this, of course, uh, contains uh, conformally flat ones. Uh, it, it allows non-diagonal non -diagonal terms. And, uh, but again, it's not the most general case uh, that, that you can imagine. So we call these things functional metrics because they are obtained from, uh, from, from this function. Maybe it's not the most uh, appropriate terminology, but that's uh, what uh, we came up with. So uh, this uh, then uh, for this, you can play the same game that we have been playing uh, from day one, namely, you can change the uh, volume form and you can define a kind of uh, Laplace type operator, uh, which is perturbed by this metric 
it's called delta zero and G. And then the thing is the coefficients of this uh, kind of Laplace type operator, the second order term, first order term, zero order term, these things can be computed uh, explicitly in terms of uh, this Newton divided differences and the coefficients of the metric. So there is some sort of kind of uh, symbolic calculus that exists in the commutative case, at least for this sort of class beginning, uh, began to emerge. And again, uh, what we need is, uh, of course, uh, to compute what we wanted to do to compute the scalar curvature. So again, this is for general n-dimensional uh, kind of non-commutative torus. Uh, but for uh, uh, general uh, metrics in this sense, uh, not the most general metric, the, the metrics that, um, as, as, I, as I explained, it's in this paper I mentioned. So uh, the term again is obtained by doing this sort of functional calculus in these two terms, uh, KD and HD. They depend on the dimension in a uniform way. And KD and HD are, are, are given in, in by, by uniform formulas in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Newton divided differences. So these are, uh, these are really, I think, the most general formulas that we can, we, we can think of so far. And uh, the question is not to prove really gauss bonnet theorem. I mean, okay, the, the, the thing with gauss bonnet is that nobody knows uh, how it, what kind of form it should take in four dimensions. We are not there yet. Because the, I mean, the, the main issue is the density of the gauss bonnet theorem. I mean, you can formulate it in terms of this zeta function and say the value of zeta at zero is such and such is, is, is invariant on the perturbations. But that's uh, by the method that Henry uh, gave uh, in the paper uh, can be done. The, the thing is to find some analog of this density and we don't have that. I'm not sure where, where, where we can get to that because uh, that's, that's an element that's really Fafian of the curvature and Fafian involves determinant and there is no determinant in the non commutative case. So that's, uh, that's, that's one of the things that's missing. So uh, I, I take a stance that gauss bonnet theorem in higher dimensions, uh, dimension uh, four and six and so on is completely open at the moment. So I think, uh, uh, and these, uh, ex again, explicit formulas in this version, because we are using Newton uh, divided differences, these uh, functions, two variable, three variable functions come out to be like algebraic functions like that, but it's been worked out. So uh, maybe, um, maybe we're not uh, right now I'm going to, okay, so these are the two functions. So, uh, well, I just, uh, I want to finish now. So uh, maybe I have a few minutes, but, uh, just uh, do a little bit of advertisements for the book that uh, just published. Uh, so advanced in non quantity geometry in honor of Alain. So I have a survey paper there with, with Farzad. So and there are a lot of other beautiful articles, well, except mine. <laughs> uh, some of you have articles there, I know. So uh, this, is, uh, this is maybe a good point uh, to uh, finish. And I thank you all for your, uh, patience and um, for being in the talk. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have any questions or comments? Hi, Masood, I have a question. Oh, hi, uh, Kamran. Yes, 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 please. Yes. Uh, so, sorry, I joined late, so maybe this is a really st stupid question, but you, you mentioned the, you know, these functional metrics. Uh, so are there any relations between these metrics and the con metrics on the, you know, from spectral triples on the state spaces, or there is no clear connection between these? I, I believe they should, I, I believe they should uh, give rise to metrics in that sense also, because uh, they, they, uh, I, 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 I think so. I think uh, they, they do. Okay, so if you're asking if there is a uh, spectral triple, uh, really, um, um, we really didn't work out, uh, I mean, the, the spectral triple side of this, because 
after after so many years now uh, we just go directly and compute uh, these uh, these uh, heat trace densities and yes. that's good enough uh, so um maybe there are some details uh, of writing this in, as 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 an spectral triple which which I'm not aware of but uh, yeah, that was exactly my question. Thank you. But, but yeah, I mean, it could be. I'm not, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do we have more questions? Okay, so Master, can I ask a question? Oh, please. So yes. You have been studying um, Torres. So, can, do you know any work about the quantum sphere? Yes, uh, that's. Uh, I was going to talk about these things. Actually, it's kind of uh, so. I had a I had a kind of alternative title: uh, mysteries of uh, curvature in non-contour geometry. So th that's one of the mysteries. You see, uh, the thing that we are doing here is uh, again we are assuming dimension is uh, is integer. If dimension is not integer or is zero. Uh, we don't know what, what to do because uh, the asymptotic expansion, there is no recipe for the asymptotic expansion in that case. Now, in the zero dimensional case, of course, for fractals, they have some ideas of uh, what is the curvature of fractal or um, what is Ricci or, uh, I mean, they, for, for Neumann algebras also, they have ideas of what is uh, kind of Ricci curvature and uh, these sort of things. But uh, how does it relate to our uh, spectral geometry and heat trace expansions? Uh, I, I think new ideas definitely are needed. I mean, we, we are we are at a crossroad. We need new ideas definitely. In in, in and certainly, I mean, these dimensions, uh, of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's totally needed. I mean, that expansion you can generalize a little bit by adding log terms and stuff. They were. Uh, they are uh, for the case of manifolds with boundary or stratified spaces, I believe, or manifolds with corners. It's uh, the the expansion is understood, but in for, for uh, more exotic uh, spaces, that's not understood at all. So yeah, that's a good question. Uh, but yeah, the, but the heat, uh, but the uh, but these, um, I would say, the spectral zeta function has been cal calculated for 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 quantum torus, for quantum sphere. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so no more questions. Then let's thank Masuda again for a beautiful. Thank you talk. very much.